Hello everyone and welcome to Blog Runner Everything and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a match review as we take a look back at Barcelona's round of 16 first leg encounter against Galatasaray which of course ended as a goalless draw and I just have to say you deserve everything good in life if you sat through the entirety of that match you know like completely focused on it because oh my goodness it was one of the most boring matches i have seen from barca <laughs> this season and honestly speaking it felt like a throwback to common era barca it was that bad at times anyhow i'm just going to do a quick match review here because i don't really have much time on my hand so it's going to be a quick fire kind of thing. There was some rotation made by Xavi in as far as the starting 11s are concerned. Aubameyang got a rest up front, Memphis Depay with the start ahead of him. And in midfield as well we saw a bit of shuffling with Frankie de Jong starting in the pivot and Nico Gonzalez coming in. And of course in the back as well Eric Garcia with a start but generally you know Dest like we would expect here because Danny Alves is unregistered. And Mark Andre just taking in goal. And now look, I'm just going to be very blunt here. The only highlight of this match, I think, the only positive from this match, the only positive takeaway here, was the performance by Iñaki Peña. Okay, we're looking at this and we're wondering, you know, just how good of a shot stopper he is. We were probably expecting Barcelona to test him a lot more than they did. And they probably should have because, I mean, at the end of the day, Barca had like 15 attempts a goal, but only four were on target. And two of those four produced some very, very top class saves from Iñaki Peña. It was a good performance by the kid and I think definitely food for thought for Xavi in as far as that number two spot. Somebody to challenge Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. I mean, what better way to show that you can fill that role than to come to the camp now and to shut Barca down, you know, relatively speaking. I say relatively speaking because for the most part, Barcelona shut themselves down, okay? There's a lot of things that Barcelona have been doing very well in the past three or so months that Xavi has been in charge, which they just were not doing on Thursday night. What were they doing well? The only thing they did well, I think, was pressing to recover the ball that Barcelona did decently well. But beyond that, the movement of the ball, especially in the final third and through midfield, it was really quasi-static. It was almost just not happening. I think um, Nico had a pretty bad game here. He seemed pretty nervous whenever it came time to pass the ball forwards. And he'd always, you know, hold up the play and pass backwards. And one thing we've been, you know, complimenting this Barca side on is how incisive and how vertical they play. You know, how direct they play sometimes when they recover the ball from an opponent who's on the attack. But today, whenever we had a chance to break, we just never took it. Because players were holding on to the ball a bit too long. And I think, honestly speaking, apart from Adama Traore, there's really no Barcelona player here tonight who I think had a good game. It was that underwhelming from Barca. No one had a terrible game, but then no one had a good game, except for Adama Traore, because like whenever he needed to beat Patrick Van Arnold and whoever else was helping double up, like he just did that with ease. And he created so many shooting opportunities for his teammates. Anywho, the performance by Barca in a nutshell, it was pretty bad, like I said. We didn't get a shot on target until like the 30th minute free kick from Memphis, which would have been a pretty awesome goal. But you know, like I said, Iñaki Peña came up with some big saves. And uh, yeah, there's really not that much more to talk about, guys. Like honestly speaking, there was one chance which did make you wonder how it didn't go in. Again, Adama Traore with the work, coming in off the right, playing the ball into the box. Aubameyang went for the overhead miscued the ball fell into Frankie de Jong's path and he just sort of you know reacted like you would trying to direct it towards goal and it came off the inside of the post and rolled straight into Iñaki Peña's hands so in some way I guess maybe it was that kind of a night uh, Barcelona did get very lucky to be honest here not to have conceded because Galatasaray did have like two very very promising situations from which they could have scored one time of course they did and it was offside so you know we don't count that because it was offside um oh wait i'm supposed to give a man of the match and yeah my man of the match is um Iñaki Peña it was a weird feeling today you know watching a Barcelona goalkeeper perform well but against Barcelona so yeah but I'm proud of Iñaki Peña nonetheless I think he's the biggest winner definitely from this match here that's that. You let me know your thoughts in the comments. What was your, you know, take on this match? 
how did you get through it? Personally, I was also watching the Atalanta Bayer Leverkusen game, you know, parallel. So I was able to get through this game. But otherwise, I was dozing through that first half. I am not going to lie to you. Anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. Have a great day and force a basa.